Boom! Uh, this is your state of leadership. Uh, She's just <laughs> dropping freaking theories over here, yo. I'm with you. What's up? Welcome, well, welcome to polypsych.org. Almost there, just one more time. Welcome to polypsych.org. <laughs> seems to be like a dictator's world. We've got we've got all the big players are actually being not celebrated, I won't say celebrated, but they're definitely more in the spotlight. You got China, Russia, the Philippines, like you got, Trump you got, keeps going and hanging out with these like Kim the bad Il. boys club. You got Kim Jong out of uh, North Korea, you have the, 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 the smart cookie. Ayatollah uh, Khomeini <laughs> in Iran, you've got the Venezuelan uh uh dictator you have uh donald trump you've got <laughs> you got some you've got donald out. trump that how scary is that <sighs> i'm just wondering so like, they, there's a uh, should there's we been, be concerned about them getting together and like bromancing that's always a possibility like there's always been that speculation as to whether or not iran and north korea will eventually hook up and mm-hmm. start sharing nuclear secrets mm-hmm. like because iran doesn't have a nuclear weapon right now they're saying that they're not going to weaponize their, their nuclear technology and north korea already has a nuclear bomb so what if north korea just sent a guy over to iran gave them the nuclear technology that they have and then iran bombs our, uh, israel the closest partner of north korea is iran why didn't we put something in there when we're making a deal and when we're giving them 150 billion dollars Think of, why didn't we do something with Iran where Iran gets in and we force Iran to get in and do something with North Korea? We don't do anything. We should have, when we made that deal, that deal is a horror show. It's one of the worst I've ever seen. When we made the deal with Iran, Kerry's saying, look, you got to help us out. We have a problem. North Korea, he's playing around with nukes because nukes, that's the whole game changer, Charlie. You know, if it weren't for that, we shouldn't even be in the Middle East. But we can't take a chance that somebody plays the nuclear game. It's always a possibility that two dictators are going to hook up in order to screw over America. But it's not, it's not all that likely, like... So dictators have this thing where they want to stay in power. And there's been uh, research that suggests that when there is a conflict, an international conflict, a dictator is the person in charge. Uh, He's less likely to be overthrown than a democratic leader because there is a less, there's less cost. There's less cost. Sorry, I I, I freaking read this like months ago in my my, uh, political science class. I'm trying to remember it. There's less cost for switching Let's say that there are 100,000 people in the country and you and a thousand of your buddies chose this dictator. And then this dictator gives you, let's say, $100,000 worth of benefits, like just to you, just just to you and your thousand people. If that dictator's knocked off, the chances of you getting another one of those dictators to give you 100K is very, very low. So you're going to support him and try to keep him in power versus if there's a democratic country and it's 50-50, the cost of switching is much, much lower. So imagine if if I'm in a democratic country and there's a Republican in office, I get seventy thousand in uh, worth of benefits. If there's a Democrat in office, I get seventy two thousand worth of benefits. If there's a Democrat that pisses me off, I can just switch over to the, to the Republican because it's less. Like I, I don't get hurt that much. So what am I losing? Like three thousand? Well, I don't like the way this guy did this. That's worth three thousand. Get out of here. You know what I mean? And yeah. in, in the case of like a Donald Trump, it may even be less. Like compared to Donald Trump to what Hillary Clinton could have been, and the difference could have been ex- like very minimal. So switching from one side to another doesn't really matter. Versus if you're a dictator and like you, the dictator keeps a very small, tiny group of mm-hmm. elite in his back pocket. Sure. That could literally prop up his regime. So the cost of a democratic president going to war versus a, a dictator going to war is uh, much higher. That was me butchering a uh, political theory to the extreme. So uh, I hope I hope it did justice in some uh, some political theories isn't pulling his hair out right now. <laughs> there's a, uh, there's uh, two professors uh, that I've heard this theory from. Okay. And uh, so, so that means that I've heard it for two semesters straight now. So this is fairly embarrassing that I can't Aww. get it exactly right. But uh, it's, ju- it seems uh, kind of involved. It's, I'm, it's I'm a little hate, tough. I'm not it's hating on you right now. It's a little it's tough. A I, need big to re- I need to review my notes. <laughs> so Justin Conrad at the University of North Carolina, Charlotte, and Jason, and um, was it Jason Weeks? Gregory Weeks. Gregory Weeks at uh, at the University of North Carolina, Charlotte. Um, I've heard this this theory from both of them. Are they aware of the fact that it wasn't real democracy? Of course they are. Are they aware of the fact that 
it requires a lot of work to actually build a democracy. You've got to have a reasonably stable civil society and get out there and participate in politics, not just in elections. Of course they are, but Russians don't like to do that stuff. They don't like to join organizations and, and you know, work in, in groups and form social movements and do all that stuff. For a short movement, a, a minority did in the early 1990s, but they don't, they don't like that stuff. And so they know that in the absence of the energy required to make democracy work, which they don't have, they have other things to do, their choice is between arbitrary autocracy and rapacious oligarchy, and they have chosen the latter. So this is the real thing. So th th technically, dictators have an advantage when it comes to international conflict and staying in power over over Democrats. We also have a thing called democratic peace with no dem all in all democracy coming down to the numbers, right? Yeah, cool. as far as as far as like staying in power, the likelihood that a dictator will stay in power, and the years that a dictator stays in power, I want to say is nine years that they uh, will stay in power versus a democratic uh, leader only stays in power for like less than four or something. So they they have a huge advantage when it comes to leadership. Okay. Boom! Uh, There's your state of leadership. Oh, Just <laughs> dropping freaking theories over here, yo. Oh, with you. The show is over. Uh, we would like for you to do one thing for us. Uh, tell two friends to download the Polycyte Podcast. Shoot them an email, a text, a raven, anything. <laughs> just tell just tell two friends to download the Polycyte Podcast. 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 <laughs> tell two friends to download the Polycyte Podcast. How many friends? No, like four or five. <laughs> I'm going to tell them all. <laughs> Thanks, it. everyone.